Hi, thank you for stopping by my poster talk. Spurred on by the Human Cell Atlas, Atlas building is now one of the favorite pastimes in the single cell community, it seems. Data sets were often generated at different times with different protocols, and so combining these into a, a consistent atlas requires overcoming complex batch effects. My name is Malta Lucan. I am a team lead in the TICE lab for integrative lung analysis at the Helmholtz Center in Munich. And I've been thinking about how to overcome these effects specifically within the context of the human lung cell atlas. Let's take a step back. If a data set is generated uh, at one point and you process the data, you perform a latent space embedding of this, you see your cells typically looking somewhat like this, separated by cell identity um, and looking kind of nice if it works. Now, if you perform a second experiment or if a different lab does this uh, at a later time point, typically you do the same thing and you want to embed the data in the same space, but you see that cell identities no longer match but are separated by what we call a batch effect. The origin of these batch effects uh, can be various. They can be technical nature, for example, different sequencing approach, uh, sequencing depths, different protocols, different labs of this, or biological in nature, whether they are different tissues uh, or from different locations, different individuals. Typically what you'd like to have, however, is that these data overlap very nicely in the latent space so you can process them jointly. Now there are methods to solve this called data integration methods and here is just a list of 16 uh, that are popular and have been used rather frequently. Um, typically when you use these methods, uh, you get different results no matter what the output is. And so it's important to guide method choice to be able to evaluate whether the output um, is something that is true to the task that you're setting it. So how do we evaluate data integration? Typically, we don't want cells to be separated by batch, but instead we want them to be overlapping across all batches. Now, single cell data sets don't look like this. They look a little bit more complicated. Uh, typically, you'd have different cell identities. And again, you don't want these to be separated by batch, but instead be separated by cellular identity, but within an identity or within a cell type to be merged across batches. These four figures or four pictures show actually two central aspects of data integration or evaluating data integration. It's the effect of batch removal and the aspect of conserving biological variation. There's a little bit of a compromise usually to be had here because optimizing for batch removal means mapping every cell to a single dot and there is no more biological variation in that representation. There are of course other aspects than these two parts that are typically looked at that we also added to our study, which is looking at other aspects of biological variation, cells are not just clusters that we would like to conserve, such as continuous phenotypes and gene level variation. So what we did is we set up a benchmarking study with 13 carefully pre-processed or tasks, where we have gold, we've generated gold standard annotations. These come from over 23 uh, different publications um, and contain over 80 different batches, uh, both RNA and attack tasks. We performed variable pre-processing to this to check what the effects are of taking highly variable genes or of scaling the data. And then we applied uh, these 16 different uh, data integration methods. Now these data integration methods can either output either corrected features, uh, joint embeddings, or integrated graphs. And therefore the output is different, meaning it's very, it, we have to be careful to design metrics which are applicable to as many of these as possible, or at least have sufficient metrics to work uh, so that many methods work on each one of these outputs. And so we designed 14 different metrics. These range from batch removal metrics to metrics for label conservation or methods that go beyond labels or cell type labels, such as whether the cell cycle um, variance is conserved after integration, whether we find the same highly variable genes per batch or whether trajectories are still conserved. And of course, we also look at scalability and the usability of these methods. So our, our outputs typically look something like this. Here we evaluate the harmony of our method using an, uh, with an embedding output, uh, using highly variable gene selection and no scaling. We get an overall score, and this is a weighted combination from two partial scores of batch correction scores and bioconservation scores. These in turn are weighted averages um, of up to nine different metrics for bioconservation or up to five different metrics for batch correction. We then run this on up to 68 different combinations of pre-processing and data integration method and methods um, to get kind of a ranking overall per task. And this here, you see the immune cell task on the only human data um, to kind of, to, to be able to say which method worked best and with which pre-processing combination. 
you may be able to see already here that there is a little bit of a trade-off for methods that perform well at bioconservation often don't perform so well at batch correction and vice versa, methods that perform well at batch correction don't necessarily perform particularly well at bioconservation. And indeed, this is a trade-off which we see across different RNA tasks and simulations in that if you plot bioconservation the y-axis and batch correction down here, the best methods typically uh, show this showcase this trade-off where some prefer err on the side of conserving more biological variation, others are on the side of removing batch effects more strongly. Thus, methods are typically appropriate for different tasks, depending on how strong the batch effect is within the task. Overall, we can perform a ranking then across all the different five uh, mRNA tasks and two simulations that we performed. Um, the attack ranking would be done, was done separately. And you can see here, I've hidden two uh, methods and number one and three, because two of these methods actually use cell type labels as input. And therefore, the comparison is not entirely fair because you may not have this information. They use additional information. But in general, we can find that Surat and Harmony, which are very popular, uh, perform well on simpler or less complex tasks that are a little bit smaller, um, but often overcorrect or uh, merge rare cell types on larger, on more complex cases. While SCGen, uh, Scanorama, and ScanVI uh, perform rather well across the board. However, two of these methods do require cell type labels. You can either use the results that we've generated here to guide the selection of your own approach, um, or you can run the pipeline if you have cell type labels. Um, a snakemake pipeline easily reproducible, um, reproduce these results, but also to just run it on your own data to see which method might perform best for your particular scenario. Now, to summarize, uh, I've told you that various methods perform well, uh, others a little, little, um, perform well in certain scenarios, but specifically also, um, which I didn't have much time to get into, that pre-processing can affect the balance between batch removal and bioconservation. And you should always consider the downstream analysis you're, you're going to do to select a particular method, because sometimes corrected features will give you more flexibility with what you're able to do compared to an integrated graph. And more in the paper, uh, you can find uh, about batch effect strength analysis, um, about uh, how different feature spaces affect attack integration, and there are into guidelines for RNA and attack data integration. Uh, you can, of course, look through all of our produced results on the website over here, um, or try to run some of these things yourself in, with our pipeline, or just use the metrics or methods um, from the module. With that, I'd like to thank all the people, uh, the lovely people who were involved in this study, specific the Colomay Tache Lab over here with Anand Chris, who looked at the attack uh, data, and Marta, who was heavily involved with making all these beautiful plots uh, and pre-processing the immune cell data sets as well. Several people from the TICE lab as well as Fabian in the back here. Thank you very much.